afternoon, Paul. Fast am I. Well, the first thing I've got to do is wish you happy birthday, Chief Minister. Well, thank you very much, Paul. A lovely present, spending my afternoon with the gentlemen of the media. You having a party? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I should. I think when you get to my age, you, uh, you those go out the window, don't they? Okay. Now you had very um, d- defined protocols about situation if there was unexplained cases, and that would be the three weeks was needed between uh, you know hearing about it, the shedding, shredding that goes on, and so on. This time you haven't done that. Is this a new protocols you're making? And of course, as far as I'm aware, we haven't heard which variant we're dealing with yet. Right, well, regarding the variant, I'll ask Dr. Ewart to come in on, on a sec. I, I think throughout this pandemic, Paul, we're learning as we go along. And if there are variants of of the number of cases and um, the seriousness of the situation, then obviously you can't have one size fits all. So we, we've tried to respond to this where we've known that it was one cluster at, at the time and... Um, we weren't seeing a sporadic spread scattered around the rest of the community at, at, uh, or where large events had been held. Well, we're trying to look at this on a case-by-case basis. And what I don't want to do is say that if you got X, then this is what happens. We're trying to be as flexible as possible. I, I know the hurt and, and pain it can cause to businesses, to people's health, mental health, etc., and our children's education if we have a, a significant lockdown straight away. So we're, we're trying to just look at the evidence and um, be as realistic as we can based on what's happened in, in the past. So as I say, we're learning all the time. But I don't know, David, do you want to expand on that before I move on to Dr. Ewart? Uh, yes, if I may, Chief Minister. Um, they always say, you know, a week is a long time in politics, Paul. Well, I think a month in a worldwide pandemic is an exceptionally long time. So it's easy to forget sometimes where we were in January. And January is very different to what we're seeing now. We've seen two unidentified cases, which is a concern because we can't trace back the transmission route as to where they came from. But what we were faced with in January was slightly different. We'd had the two household clusters that came off the back of December. Um, They had themselves had several high risk settings. We then in the January had someone as well who had been involved in a high risk healthcare setting that actually tested positive. Again, we didn't necessarily at that point know the chains of transmission. And from that case, we then saw secondary transmission onward as well. And then a couple of cases popping up as well where we didn't have the link. So it was much wider than what we're experiencing at the moment with these two particular cases. If we saw something similar to that again, then we would have to reconsider our position, but we're not seeing that at the moment. So I think what we've got to do, and it was in the Chief Minister's speech before about proportionality, we have to be proportionate to the risks that we're facing. Um, And this situation, like I say, it's easy to forget now four or five weeks on, but it's very different to what we were experiencing at the start of January. Right. And Dr. Ewart, would you like to come in on the variant? I know you've got an update there. Yes, thank you, Chief Minister. We got the latest results through from Liverpool yesterday afternoon, and that gives us sequencing on all positive PCR samples that were sent over. Um, The last, most recent one was the 22nd of February, so we don't have sequencing on the two cases that we've been talking about over the last couple of days, but we do have sequencing on everything up till the 22nd of February. And since the 17th of January, all the genomes that have been sequenced have been Kent variant. So that includes the um, positives that are part of the steam packet cluster, and it also includes some travellers who've come across but not been part of that and who should have been isolated. Um, As I commented before, we cannot therefore be sure whether these two cases that we have at the moment are related to each other and or to the existing cluster or whether they possibly link back to other travel related imported cases we don't know and in fact when we get the genome sequences back um, the high likelihood is that they will also be Kent variant but that again will not be able to tell us precisely whether they link to the cluster or whether they potentially link back to other imported cases with the same variant. Uh, Just to finish on that have we been lucky yet again the third time lucky? Well, to an extent, you always have a little bit of luck, Paul, but I also think it it clearly shows that our contact tracing team are exceptionally professional at what they do. They've gone out there quickly, they've worked into the night 
to find out who are the key contacts of anyone with a case and quickly get them isolated, get them swabbed and get the test. So yes, there's always an element of luck that um, more of these cases haven't been, say, um, asymptomatic and they've gone around spreading without letting anyone know. But the fact that we've done so well, um, I would say, is a, a great part of that will be down to the professionalism of, of our teams who do the contact trace and, and across the board, all our team working together, but that area in particular. Right. And my other question, uh, obviously knocked off the headlines, was the steam packet situation. The inquiry took place. Um, this inquiry, you've got your new protocols in place for that. That was an inquiry. Therefore, will it be made public exactly what happened, where the, where the fault issues were, what's being sorted out, and will the public know about it? Well, clearly there was um, an opinion that the steam packet felt that it was only their UK-based um, crews that had to comply with the, the rules of quarantine, and we were under the impression that they knew it was their um, entire crews that had to comply with that situation. We've come up with a, a solution whereby testing and vaccinating their staff moves us out of the position where hopefully we don't need to ask them to quarantine as long as they strictly adhere to the PPE wearing on board the, the ship while sailing. I don't know, Dr. Ewart, if there's anything you'd like to add to that. Uh, I think that covers it very well, Chief Minister. We can reduce as far as possible the risk from the steam packet crew, but we can't eliminate it. Um, obviously, because of the nature of the work they do, and indeed others in other transport-related um, areas there is a remaining risk that we will see this again so you know we, we're going to have to live with it okay thank you Chief Minister.